Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. It's time for another thrilling installment of Bedtime Tales by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. So let's see, we're going from the greedy king in our last installment to the girl from the sea. Traditional. Mm. Mm. Selkie story. <laughs> I almost want to think it's a mermaid story. Selkie. Ah. Once there was a man who fell in love with a strange and beautiful girl. He'd first set eyes on her one morning while she was dancing on the sands. But the girl was one of the seal people, and when he went to speak to her, she fled, put on her seal skin, and swam out to sea. Now the man knew that if he stole her seal skin, the girl could never become a seal again and would be his forever. Rude much? Seriously? Um, the, the first part is true. If you stole the seal skin, she could never become a seal again. But that doesn't mean she would be yours. So, the next time she was by the shore, he snatched the skin away and hid it in his cottage. Then he went back for the girl, and as she was sad and lonely and frightened, she agreed to marry him. But the girl was never really happy, for she pined for her life in the sea, and for all her friends and companions. One day, while her husband was out, the girl searched the cottage for her seal skin and finally found it deep in the cellar. Why would she think to look for it in the cottage? Did the guy ever let it slip that he took it and was hiding it? Because that's not the kind of thing you let the girl know if you're trying to win her. You don't go, I'm the reason that you're miserable and can't go home, so you'll still marry me, right? Jeez. Doesn't quite work that way. She ran down to the shore with it, and as she put it on, she forgot about her human husband and her life in the cottage. She swam far, far away, and the man never saw her again. Serves him right? The man was very sad, but sometimes, far out in the bay, he thought he could hear the sound of her voice, singing with the seals. Okay, yeah, that guy was, like in a lot of these classic fairy tales, a real big pain in the rear end. Yeah, because a lot of these old stories, well, a lot of fantasy stories overall, the, the woman tends to be the bad conduct prize. You do something bad and you get the girl. Okay, now the music box. Hopefully not quite so down and, I'm going to do this bad thing because I want this beautiful girl. Yeah. Though, isn't that like half of movies? Do <laughs> something to get the girl or do something because they've lost the girl? The music box. Jenny had a very unusual music box. It was shaped like a windmill, and there was even a little wooden miller outside it with two sacks of grain. When Jenny turned a key, the sails went round, the music played, and the little man bent down to pick up the sacks. One day, the key broke, and the windmill's sails stopped turning round. I'll get it fixed, said Jenny, but she forgot. The little windmill stood, Neglected and dusty on Jenny's windowsill. Hmm. Lost toys? Island of lost toys? Forgotten toys? Hmm. One morning, Jenny pulled back the curtains and heard a tiny voice. It's too bad, said the voice. I can't get the sacks of grain into the mill. And even if I could, the sails can't turn, so the grain won't be ground. Jenny bent down to look at the little miller. His two sacks had cobwebs on them. I'm so sorry, she said humbly. I'll get a new key this very morning. And she did. She rushed back with the key and turned it in the music box. The pretty tune tinkled out, the little miller set to work again, as the sails of the windmill turned round. Okay, this is another one of those stories where it's kind of just there. I guess it's like, don't forget your toys? Or don't forget to do things you say you're going to do? Because she said she was going to get it fixed, and then she forgot. Yeah, and then there's people like me who have a mental reason that we forget stuff like that. ADH people, look it up. Pinchy shoes. Jane had a pair of red leather shoes with little straps on them. She loved them, and she wore them every day to school, and every weekend when she went shopping with Mom. Must be nice to have an entire wardrobe that coordinates with your red shoes. Hmm. One day, Mom realized that Jane was limping. What's the matter? she asked. Nothing, said Jane, who didn't want to admit that her shoes were pinching. But her shoes felt worse and worse every day, 
and Mom soon noticed. Your shoes are too small, she said. You need some new ones. Jane was very upset. She didn't want new shoes. You're a girl, right? <laughs> she loved her old ones, so she sulked around the stores with Mom as they looked for another suitable pair. Then Mom found another pair of red ones, with bows instead of straps. Very smart, she said. Hmm, said Jane, still unsure. But she was soon skipping down the street. There's a lot of moments that are just kind of there. It's a story about shoes. And at the top, there's a picture of the old shoes. And at the bottom, the girl skipping along. In the new shoes. And I'll probably include both images. And speaking of shoes, hmm. Ah, looking over to the next page. Goblin fishing. We have a lot of goblin stories in this book. I wonder if there's a separate book by this illustrator and artist who is just these goblins. You mean the illustrator and author? Because the illustrator and the artist would be the same person. That's what I meant. Thank you. All right, goblin fishing. It was a lovely sunny day, and Gareth Goblin decided to go fishing at Collywobble Lake. He wanted Griselda to go with him, too. But Griselda didn't like fishing very much, as she always felt sorry for the poor fish. But she put on her sun hat, picked up her swimsuit, and trotted along beside Gareth with all his fishing gear. When they arrived at the lake, Griselda put on her swimsuit. You can fish if you like, she said, but I'm going swimming. Those two things kind of don't go together. If you're swimming, you're probably going to scare away all the fish. And if he's throwing his line in the water, yeah, hopefully you guys aren't near each other. Yeah, because there's this whole hook thing, kind of sharp, barbed for a reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's even in the picture that it has, you know, a nice hook on the end. At the end of the day, what do you think Gareth had caught? An old boot, a stick, a flat stone, and a rubber ring. And do you know why? Griselda had frightened all the fish away from the bait and tied those things onto Gareth's fishing line instead. Okay, that's a, that's a good one. We, we knew she was going to scare the fish away, but we, that would also explain how a stone ended up on a fishing rod. Yes, a flat stone. <laughs> the boot, the stick, and the inner tube could easily end up on there normally. But not the stone. So, yes, she feels so sorry for the fish that she's going to make sure Gareth can't catch anything. <laughs> That's actually very clever. Very clever. And these are definitely the same goblins from the previous stories. Well, yes, because they even have the same names. Like I said, I wonder if there's a book of just these goblins. There could be. Dog show. Tracy had entered her dog, Muffet, in the local dog show. Her brother, Lay, was very scornful. Who'd give a prize to that old scruff, he mocked. He's all hair and legs. It was true. Poor Muffet was a shaggy, long-haired mongrel and was neither beautiful nor obedient. All the same, Tracy combed his ears and brushed his coat until it shone. She even dusted him with talcum powder to improve his smell. Finally, they set off to the show. First, there was a prize for the most handsome dog. Muffet didn't win that. Next, there was the prize for the most obedient dog. Muffet didn't win that either. Then, there was the prize for the fastest dog. Each dog had to run after a ball and bring it back to its owner. You might win that, said Tracy hopefully. Your legs are long enough. But there was a greyhound there, too, and greyhounds are very fast. As soon as the contest began, the greyhound shot off at top speed, but he ran so fast that he rushed straight past the ball and had to go back for it. But Muffet's favorite game was retrieving balls, and Tracy had played it with him many times. Muffet ran straight to the ball and then ran back with it, dropping it at Tracy's feet. Brilliant, said the judge, handing Tracy the prize. Another one of those ones that's just there, but it's a pleasant story. Basically, even a mutt can win a dog competition. Yep, though uh, no, no more using talc. <laughs> can tell this is an older book. Yeah. All right, play horse. Andy was fed up. He had been chosen to be the back end of a horse in the annual school play. Why couldn't I be the wicked wizard, he complained, or the handsome prince? Nobody sees the back end of a horse. All through the rehearsals, Andy fooled around. He started going backward and kicking his legs out in a skittish way. Behave, Andy, snapped Mrs. Barton, but Andy was enjoying himself too much. 
he thought he'd get a good laugh on the night of the play. The opening night arrived. Rows and rows of parents were there to watch. Andy clattered on the stage with his front half, Darren. Now, thought Andy, I'll really steal the show. He kicked up his right leg and wiggled it. Then he started walking backward. Stop it, hissed Darren. You'll split the horse. Too late. Andy parted from Darren and crash. He'd fallen off the stage into the front row. Everyone roared with laughter. Andy was furious. Well, he wanted to steal the show, said Mrs. Barton. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess he was a real horse's, insert word here, back end. <laughs> All right, and that's it for this thrilling installment of Bedtime Tales by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. If you haven't picked it up yet, I'm sure Lux is still putting links for it down there for me, along with links to eBay and whatever else we feel like linking. I don't know, maybe throw a link into your Zazzle store sometime. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I know, it doesn't exactly fit because we don't have any books on Zazzle. I don't think we even have any book covers. <laughs> I don't think Zazzle sells book covers. But anyways, if you've missed earlier installments of Bedtime Tales, they are in their own playlist, or should be. They are. <laughs> if you want to check out other books and other playlists, we have those too. And then there's all the pop culture stuff on the main section of the channel. Oh yeah, and Amazon, Ebates, not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content in the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.